everyone, it's Cindy and welcome back to Studio Lou. I am here with, what day of Diff and Remember are we on now? Day 14 and the prompt is Mushroom Robots. So, I have to admit, this felt a little random to me. So I had a big long call last night that I had to attend for work and I just spent a bunch of time playing with some inks and um, like ink pens um, and just drawing a robot, drawing a several robots. <laughs> and then I finally finished one that I thought would be good for a project and I just spent some time early this morning when I woke up editing. It's actually early now. I'm just having a cup of tea in my little Christmas or my winter birds mug. I can't really show it to you without dumping my tea. It's a vitamin C, David's tea, because I'm trying to stay away from the plagues that everyone seems to have. Um, so what did I do? I did a bit of fussy cutting ahead of time so that I wouldn't have to say, I'm just going to go fussy cut this all the way back. <laughs> so I cut out my robot from my book that I drew him. Um, he's all been, he's all been scanned and cut out again. Cause, um, yeah, I didn't want to use the original cause the paper, I wanted to save it. I just wanted to save it. Then I have all these little mushrooms that I cut out um, from a long time ago when I had all of these mushrooms when I was designing my magical mycology kit. Those were some of my overlays that I had in my Procreate app that I that I sort of designed and I can use them again and again. So I cut a bunch of them out. So I have a bunch of mushrooms and I have a robot. Then I have this, um, these are some scraps that were sent to me by my good friend Mary Ellen over at the Red Parrot channel. We did a scrap swap for Defemember. And what I was thinking I'd like to do today is like kind of, um, like what is a robot, right? It should do something. It should have some sort of a purpose. And um, I felt like I want this robot to be like, so mushrooms is the theme. So maybe he'll be like a mushroom delivery robot or something. Um, yeah, we shall see. So I had this idea that I'd like to make kind of like um, a journal card that holds on to another journal card. And this will be one of the journal cards, this guy. Um, so I need to make this now. So I like how like this looks on this fun jelly plate, but I also really like this jelly plate, but I think that because I use greens in here, it gets a little lost. So why is my dog barking upstairs? He's such a bonehead. Um, so I was thinking I would like that like that so that you get a bit of the, the color of the green. Um, so yeah, I need to think about what, what is next? I'm going to go talk to my dog one moment. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, I just had to talk to my dog about how rude it is to be barking while I'm filming. So anyways, um, I think what I'm going to do here is sort of a two project approach. So first I want to use this lovely jelly print and I need um, to back it on something here. So I probably need some paper that is nice and a little thick, not super thick, but a little more thick. Yeah, I'm going to grab some paper. Just one second. Okay, cardstock acquired. So, um, I think first I will work with this because that'll let me know kind of what size I need things to be. So this is going to be the front part of the journal card. Um, now, when I say I wanted him to be like a purveyor of things like mushrooms, um, here's my handy dandy knife. Here it is. Let's get this book spine out of the way. I've got all these bits and bobs everywhere. And I need to move my bottom. Okay, so we're going to use this little compartment that I have in the center here. Cut it open. But before I do anything else with it, I first want to close my knife and get my ink. I need a 
brown, or not brown. Just gonna ink the back of this because we're gonna be able to open it. I'd like to put glossy accents on his eyes, but it takes forever, but I might emboss them. I don't know. Okay, so this is going to fold down like so. And then I'm just going to kind of put just the shelf on here, just his little shelf. And then I want to go just around the edge with a bit of black. Sorry if this is hard to see. It's, uh, I'll show you in a minute. There just like that and then also at the back there we go okay so now this is a little opening shelf okay maybe I should emboss him now so I'll get my embossing stuff Okay, so I don't have an embossing pen and I just want to do the eyes. So I'm just going to try to do it with like my re-inker. That should theoretically work. <laughs> this is just distress embossing ink. We're going to see how this goes. <laughs> okay. I'm going to pull a page out of here. Get this one. When I'm embossing, I like to use like one folio like this so I can lay this here. And then I'm going to use this holographic embossing powder because I really like the holographic stuff. Okay. It appears to be on there, but this is a little little extra hanging around for some strange reason not that I'll be upset really that I'll have a few more sparkles but yeah that's good now let's put this back in the container okay most important part is getting the lid back on those sparkles. Okay, mi minimal fallout here. Now we need a heat gun, which is somehow tangled. There we go. Okay. Hmm. a little wetter than normal because I used that ink. So this is a what not to do kind of video. Yeah, we're going to have to change it up. Um, let me think. So I think the issue is mainly just that there's too much um, embossing ink there. So what I think we can probably do is just blot it a little bit with some fabric. I have some fabric around. I have a little something up here, I'm sure. Um, yeah, right there. Okay. Let me just get my tiny dishcloth. Hold on. I just want to like blot this extra because we don't want it all rolling around. Now, is it still sticky though? No, not really. So can we try again? Let's try again. What do you do when you don't have an embossing pen, right? You buy one. <laughs> okay. Let's just do a little drip. And we'll move it with our finger. So like we know it's wet. It's there. Now, let's get that same piece of paper again because why? I need to hurry probably too, so. there. 
have this whole like little embossing um kit that has a little brush and everything but like the reality of it is with things that like I don't use that often I just like can't be bothered to take out the supplies <laughs> which is why I also should not buy them <laughs> okay mini mini dishcloth again here let's try again we'll see what happens this time Oh, this is better. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, his eyes are awesome now. Okay, holographic. Okay. Let me just pick them up and show them to you. Look at his eyes, they're so fun. Or holographic. I hope you can see that in the light because I did all that work for you. <laughs> all right. Um, now, so I said I wanted like some of this background, but also I want this fun boiled book here. So like this. And then I also need to keep this like a little space that I can put things in. So let's begin, I think, by gluing this to this because we know we want that there. Um, I wonder if I have any cool stitches on my sewing, Ooh, no, 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 my sewing machine that would look neat stitched around this. I'm going to see. I think I do. I'm, th I'm thinking of one. All right. So put that here. Okay, I'm going to head to the sewing machine because I want to add some stitching on there. Okay, so I just did some black stitching and what I did was I sort of increased the or decreased the speed at which I kind of pushed my paper to create almost like a wavelength. So like it starts smaller and it gets bigger and wider and more spread out. So happy with that. Now my robot I want to put here like so yeah okay but what I'm going to do is uh, where's my art glitter glue so here I'm going to let's get the little little antenna here we'll get around the edge of the head fill the head in but then when we get to the body, we're only going to do the outline of the body. And we're going to do the legs, get everything else all filled in with glue. And the arm. It is so cold today. Ugh. Yuck. <laughs> I'm happy to be inside. All right. So now we'll glue him down right there. And then I'm going to press outward away just until I get that body down. Then we can just put the rest of the pieces down, down, down. Okay. So now what we have is this little flap here. So I want to come in with my little tweezers and I just want to open up. Actually, no, those tweezers are too sharp. Um, something a little gentler, maybe my bone folder. Mm, it's too big. <laughs> <laughs> what do I have that is small and not like medieval? Maybe just a paintbrush. And we're just opening up this little compartment that I left open. Okay. So then. I want to decide on 
what size I want this to be um, as a journal card. And do I want it to be like a freeform shape? Kind of. I think I do want it to be like a freeform shape. So I think I'll come around here, keep some of this background. So this is going to be one journal card, I think. Yeah. So I'm going to glue this down. I just realized this is an Avery label. I totally could have like <laughs> made a sticker with that, but that's okay. I'm going to glue this down. I'm actually going to stitch around it again too just because I want the, um, that nicely stitched down. So I'll do that now. Alrighty, so that's all stitched around the edge. And then I think I also just want to edge this with a little bit of black soot ink to just outline it here. Alright, now we need to work on the background, um, which is going to be using this and this. So I'm just going to tear off this excess paper here, because this will be my backing for this. over here and then I knew that I was going to have a little extra um, up here but that's okay because I wanted to maximize the paper um, and I want to use um, okay so it's gonna be this I want to use some grungy book spine on the bottom here of this because this will be like sort of like a pocket that will hold on to here um, that off though I need um, some of my mushrooms before I glue that down completely I want to add one here Sorry, it sounds like my husband is with pots and pans upstairs of course one there okay to be too similar. I need to decide on what mushroom I want to go with. Maybe there and I'll just do it on the one side. 
for now. Okay. Yeah. So now I can lay this grungy book spine. I also need to refill this glue bottle. Do I have any more glue in this glue bottle? Oh, very little. <laughs> oh, but it's working. This is good. Yeah, this is going to give me more glue. Faster. All right. Want these fun strings then. This one on the front of that. So it's going to have like a bit of texture or, um, you know, that'll be in front. It'll be more risen up, like dimensional. That's the word I'm looking for. And I could thicken this, but I don't want to make a really, really thick, thick piece. here and I need to determine how I want like what will the mechanism be that's going to hold him I'm thinking about like how fungus kind of grows and comes out here um that could be a cool idea and I have this fun scrap from um Mary Ellen as well and it reminds me of like a few different kinds of mushrooms um like and I'm thinking it might be kind of cool to make like two arms that would come out like on the sides here out of this. So do I want to back it first and then tear it? Yeah, I think so. I want it to be a little thicker. Let me grab some paper. Um, this will do. So what I'm going to do, I think, is stitch these on. Um, I also want to change up the shape of this whole thing. Um, I'm just not feeling geometric, like square type things today. I don't know. This is actually a shape I really have grown to enjoy. Okay, so what I'm going to go, go do is I'm going to stitch these arms on here. Um, actually, I should probably glue them first so I know where I want them to be. So one will go here, I think like this. 
And then one will go over here like this, maybe a little higher, a little lower, like that. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe I will just throw some glue on there rather than trying to draw a line. Whoops. So there's, whoops. There's one. And then two is this, gotta be a little bit higher right there. Yeah, okay. So let's try to slide him out of here for now so that I can lay these down flat. Okay, so I'm gonna go do a single stitch around here and I will be right back. Alrighty, so stitching is done. Just used black thread and went around. Now, my whole concept is I want him to just be able to slide up in here in these little arms, like so. Perfect, okay. Let's throw that back in the scrap bin. Now, um, now we need more mushrooms. So let's get the other stuff out of the way here. Put my glue bottles over here. Whoops that I stopped doing that and knocking them over. Um, just a quickie tidy here. This is what you do when <laughs> trying to get everything put back together. All right. This goes in here. Perfect. And I'm only missing one of my glue pins, which didn't have a thingy on it. Oh, yes, it did. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. There. Okay. Hiding done, now it's mushroom time. Um, okay, so the first thing I wanna do is sort out how will he be purveying little mushrooms? Will they be like, I think they're gonna be like removable. Is that fun or what? Like that they'd be removable. That's the whole reason I left this little compartment open is that, you know, they'd be in here. You could get some out. See, they fit pretty well in there. I can shove a few of them in there. So like in a journal, if this were to be in a journal, then someone has the option to take all these little mushrooms out and use them in their journal in different places. He's like a little, he's a little gift giver. Tis the season, right? That one's big. I don't wanna make them too small because you know, not that one. This one. We got all sorts of mushrooms we can fit in here. It's great. He's a generous robot. Okay. And they'll all just kind of hang out in there, which is nice. Okay. So then this little flap can close up. Um, do we want to put a closure on that or is that just getting a little extra? I think it's a little extra. It can just be there, right? Like, you know, because they're not going to fall out. They're in there. They're trapped. Um, so now on this, let's separate for a little bit. I want to do, well, actually I won't separate. I want to put some mushrooms on each of these. So on here, I kind of want to have a couple mushrooms coming out from the sides here um, on these like so. So that like that. Um, actually this one over here because we have that kind over there. That may be there and I need a little one like this little one here. Uh -huh. Not that. Mm, maybe. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Or maybe this. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Then over here, I think I want to put couple little mushrooms like at his feet you know because he's obviously a foraging robot he's out there trying to find more mushrooms to forage I need a bigger one here to stand up on the page a little more one there yep okay then do we want to have maybe that like that and do we want to do anything else? Would he have one in his hand? No. Hmm. Would he have a little mushroom on his head? 
because he's a mushroom bot. Let's see how that would look. Let me cut that out. Oh, I kind of like it. Cute, cute. Okay, let's start gluing. We'll start with this one. So this is our last active day of this week. We have a little break after this, which is good. I feel like I kind of need one. I've got to get caught up on some things. I'm actually happy to have these little breaks in between and not just be going hardcore on every single day. It feels good to just breathe a little. So that piece is done. Now this one. Um, I'm going to trim the excess off of the edges if you're wondering. one is this one that I want to put here in the back. How do I have that? Kind of like that. Yeah. All right. So that one can stick down totally. Now we got to come in and we got to trim off the inside. also leave that there. How would it look? Would it look better? I think it'd look better trimmed maybe. Well, I don't know. I kind of like how that looks though. Let's just see if I want to leave these as so. Yeah, I think I do. Okay, and then I'll trim this off the edge here obviously. Okay. So now if we put our robot in though, does he damage those, those hangovers? No, he doesn't actually. He's fine. He's so nice. He doesn't do any damage. Here's the little surprises. Okay. So now I'm just going to go over both of the back of these here um, with my bone folder. I'm going to lay down the stitches on the back. I'm actually, I actually have gold thread in my bobbin right now, which is funny. Kind of robotic, unplanned. This just lays down the stitches so it's not so raised up. And then it will come in with um, ink on the back of these. And you'll have two nice big journal cards like a nested journal card connected with mycelium. I don't think we need any more mushrooms. I think we're we're good. It's it's tempting to just use all of them, <laughs> but let's stop. Okay, so then we stick this in here. 
All right, guys, I think this is a fun little project. So we have a nested journal card, double journal card, and our robot is a purveyor of little mushrooms. And they're all just stuffed in there. In fact, I'm going to stuff one more in there. So it's even more full of little, little gifts. I think I can fit, you know, yeah, one more in there. That's good. And we'll put our little one in the front there to just kind of seal them in. So I hope you enjoyed this project. I had a lot of fun with these little mushrooms and making my little bot. Um, so until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. I will also post some images on Instagram so you can get a good look at this little robot friend. Um, and until next time, I will talk to you. Bye for now.